I'm going to try quickly fit the infrared sensor and flash the firmware so this printer is ready to be sent to one of the lucky winners. I've already got the A3S in a box on the floor and the parcel has been sealed and I've forgotten to put any stickers in there because I couldn't find them. So I didn't forget, I just couldn't find them. I'm going to try to do this quickly and then get this out. So well done to the lucky winners, Vicky and Connie. And I should also mention the project files and instructions have been kindly uploaded onto Thingiverse by CDRS Carl. I'm not sure how I'm meant to pronounce that. And the project is called JJ Aurora A5 Infrared Auto Bed Level. So I wouldn't have been able to do this without this information being made available. Um, okay, so this is infrared sensor. Um, essentially, you turn this on. We need slightly longer machine screws. That's good. Okay. Just pushing the sir clips down. Okay, and that's what it's meant to look like. And the nozzle is further down than the bottom of this piece here. And in any case, if this were to push down, this would just lift up. Okay, I'll just have a quick read of the instructions on Thingiverse. And just make sure I don't bugger this up. Okay, I don't have any tiny machine screws to fix this on like here. So I think what I'm going to have to do, I'm just going to try force a M3 nut in. Is it long enough? Let's find out. Yep, I think it is. Okay, fuck it. Just get it on the front of like that. So these machine screws are 10 mil, which are going in these two holes. And then the other ones that I used are 5 mil, maybe. And if I need to, I can adjust this and that. Oh shit! Oh, unbelievable! So this bit of plastic actually scratches onto the terminals. Okay, I'm gonna just bend the pins up. I think. I've got my wires. I'm going to just solder these directly onto the terminals, I think. Got my heat shrink here. to make sure I've got plenty of wire. It says in, on the instructions that you need about a metre. It's going to do it a bit longer just to be safe. Just feeding it through into this trunking. Not sure if, probably should have twisted the wires but Okay, so I've done the wiring up to this point here and I need to work out how to get it into the enclosure. Again, that's not really clear from the instructions that I found, so I'm thinking I might just use this aviation panel mount and put a connection point somewhere. But what I need to do first is open up the enclosure and just have a look at what's inside and just familiarise myself with uh, where the wire's going to go and what I need to do. So I'm just going to move this up while I start to open this and then I'll unplug it and Ok 
Okay, I think this goes. So I'm going to take the Z minimum out. I think I might use these connector terminals just to split the wires so I can do one side and then somehow connect outside the box because I think I can pass them through right in here. Yeah, the wiring's not great on, the, on this machine, I don't find it easy to access. I'm just going to write a note for myself to help me remember what the wiring so out is brown ground is white and VCC is yellow and on the control board voltage ground signal someone wrote to me telling me I was doing this wrong and then I said to them well, why don't you put a video up because I've not seen anyone really share how to do this but I think the way I'm doing it works get it in the appropriate jaws so it doesn't move around this one actually goes a bit too long so just snip it down a bit about 3 mil, 4 mil of Y exposed pop that in with a little bit of the rubber or PVC sheathing This seems to work. So the first one needs to be the voltage. So that's going to be yellow, I think. Hear a click. That's good. Then ground, which is white. No clicks. I've done that one badly. And then brown. Click. So that one's okay. Right. Pop these on. Just there, that one there. Okay, there was a flashing light there, that's a good sign. Okay, I'm just going to flash the firmware on this now uh, in the file or collection of files that you download from uh, Thingiverse with the uh, STL templates and so on and descriptions. There's also a Marlin 1.1.8 C file and if you go to for this particular board on the J0A5 you want to go to tools uh, to board and change that to the Arduino Genuine Genuino uh, to Arduino Mega 2560 Make sure you select the right COM port as well Okay, it's done uploading. That was nice and simple So the next thing to do is working The test The first thing to do now is to home the machine and check that either side of the Z axis is the same height. I did this with my vernier caliper. That's 8614, 8620, so that's pretty good. I'm not going to mess about with that. You now need to level your bed manually as best you can, but you can't use the assisted bed leveling. The reason is, if the infrared probe detects a bed say 3mm below the nozzle in the first sector, raising the bed to 0.2mm below the nozzle and moving to the next will result in the bed being detected by the infrared sensor still at 3mm. This will skew the bed levelling.
you have to instead move the nozzle manually in the X and Y axis using a piece of paper between the nozzle and the bed until you are happy it is as good as it can get. You now need to work out the new offset for the Z axis. Unfortunately you can't do this in Cura, so I opened Repetio Host connected to the 3D printer using a USB cable and used the G-code input terminal to do the following. M503 which displays the current EEPROM settings. M851Z minus 0.5 for example which sets the offset. M500 which saves that setting to the EEPROM and then M503 to check the EEPROM uh, the new setting has been saved. I'm going to change the Z offset now by writing M851 Z minus 2.0 I had it at 2.5 before I had it at 2 I had it at minus 2.5 before I'm going to save that to the EEPROM which is M500 I'm going to check that by writing M503 M503. You can see it's changed on my screen. G28. Turning it again. I then check the Z offset by moving the gantry down by writing G1Z0. And G1Z0. I check the distance between the space between the heat bed and the nozzle with a 0.2 millimeter feeler gauge. If I needed to adjust the offset, I repeated the M851 command, changing the measurement. Closer to zero is higher, and further into the minus numbers moves the offset lower. Again, M500 to save to the EEPROM, and M503 to check that it has saved. Okay, that's a good sign. I also checked the steps for the extruder by placing a piece of tape around the PLA at the stepper motor opening and retracting the filament 100 millimeters. I then worked out how much had actually moved and then put it in an equation to work out the new steps. I divided what I had asked it to move by by what it actually moved and times that by the number of steps in the firmware. I rewrote the new steps into the firmware and reflashed the Arduino using IDE. Okay, that's done. I can close that. Close that. Reconnect on Repetia host. Just gonna home this. G28. I'm not sure if flashing the firmware also does anything to the EEPROM. Zero. Uh, no, I think I think it does. Okay, I'm going to put some uh, PLA in there and just do a test print. Okay, I just found a video by Dahazu. Uh, I think what I did when I opened this up, I accidentally moved this in the wrong place. What you need to do is turn that around, pop it in like that. Hopefully, that's going to be okay now. I then edited my start code in Cura. This will include a G29 command which will perform a bed leveling grid, which the print will reference. This information is also available to see after the M503 command but again not in Curo. You either have to use the serial terminal in the Arduino ID or, as I did, Repetio Host. I definitely feel like you still need the tweezers just to kind of quickly pull a bit of a filament away at certain points. Um, also this sort of design, there's so much stuff around the nozzle it makes it hard to kind of do that and also to see what you're doing. Um, 
but it is sticking so okay something's gone wrong the printer's just not responding that wasn't doing too bad in the in the scale of things um i've had a little google and it might be the usb pen itself so i might suggest that they use a different one but anyway this is what's going to be sent out along with the a3s so good luck in your new life i hope they don't scrap you and use you for parts it might be what you deserve mm -hmm. Thank you.